Good morning, Reefers. I just got my shipment in and my lights came early, a day early, so I'm pretty happy about that. I also got a few things like this automatic fish feeder, which you can program the time and it'll just dump out some food for you. So that's really cool. Those are um, really affordable and awesome to have if you're going away. Plus, it um, helps fatten up your fish if you got some skinny fish. Um, I also got one of these filters, an aquarium sponge, just for when I'm siphoning out my tank. I'm going to try this just to. Um, separate the nasty stuff like the detritus and whatnot when I'm cleaning out the sumps. So we'll see how this works. I'm going to make something for that. Um, I always like testing out new products and other people's designs. If something's really cheap, I'm going to test out the product before I even attempt to sell it to my customers. It's just, I don't want to give somebody crap and then them get mad. So it does happen sometimes. There are defective products, especially when you're getting them overseas for cheap. But, but anyway, so this is another cool gadget. It's a magnetic, so if you drop any screws or something in your tank, uh, it's a back scratcher, claw, grabber, whatever you want. And it's telescoping. Sorry, I had to pull that. Um, so it's awesome. You want to reach in your tank, something in your sand, you messed up, pull it through. Very cool. Everyone in the reefing hobby should have one of these next to their tank at all times. So awesome gadget and these lights are incredible. I can't wait to get them up. They're over my grow out frag tanks and you can connect up to a hundred of them through the Wi-Fi, which is pretty sweet. I have three there, two up top and three on the bottom. And it makes a huge difference um, how many lights you have. I think the par in there is like 1200 lumens or something. I, I forget. I have to actually check it out. Um, look who's on the move. Hey, my little sea cucumber must have not been happy where he was. Um, he's looking for food somewhere else. So anyway, so I have one of these uh, 24 inchers underneath here. And I, I think it's like overkill. I don't need to go that close to the front of the glass. Because um, then as soon as it gets dirty, it just makes it look instantly dirty. So I'm going to move that light back a little. So I'm going to do a four foot strip and a two foot strip for the six foot top of the tank. And then I'm going to return these things. I'm just going to use the Radeon's as accents. The only place I have acros is like right, right in this rock in here. And I have a couple more that will be right under the lights. So everything else will be fine with just those blue lights. And I plan on just putting in mushrooms and low light favias and different things anyway, egg cans. So over here we have two um, four foot LED strips. And they are one blue, one white, and I don't know if you guys can really tell, but it does a great job. I mean, look at that. There's only two on this tank, and it's pretty well lit. I can't complain for just two. Um, I wouldn't recommend keeping corals for long under those two, but it'll get you by. If you're a starter, uh, it's the best way to fill the system up. You're getting full light. I mean, can you imagine that? You buy, you should fill the whole top of your tank with these lights. Um, I'll let you know what that looks like because I'll probably do that. So, I was a little cheap and that's why I had three spread out, but I definitely find that the anemones really get some serious pop with just a little more strength um, in the lumen spectrum. So, a lot of people have lights and they don't even realize it, man. You can be killing your corals because they're actually too dim. They're beautiful lights and they may make the corals look good, but they're just not strong enough to, to give the zoanthilla what they need to keep growing healthy and, and keep that colors popping. So, a um, couple things. This is how I do my carbon and GFO. I use these containers from BRS. They're really awesome. I use them in the um, reactors over here that feed right off my return pump. So there's my dosing system. There is my GFO and carbon. And that just flows right into the tank off my return. And I actually have my return that goes through my sump, behind my skimmer, and over there. A lot of people, they don't even think about that. They just have the return go up top, and they want as much water as they can to the top of the tank. And it's about circulation. Turnover volume's cool, but make sure you're, you're getting circulation where you need it. Stagnant water is detrimental to a successful tank and that's a problem. So anyway, so yeah, so these things are awesome. You keep them on hand, keep them cleaned up. 
have some backups, swap them out. Don't get lazy with your maintenance. Your tank's gonna start to suffer the second you let your phosphates get out of control or you're just not doing your routine maintenance. So, I mean, look what happened with me with this Fido thing. I killed it just by um, being in bed in the hospital and not being able to change that thing. Everything died. So I got a new um, culture. This has been sitting here for a couple days, so it's been out of the fridge. As long as you shake it, it should be okay. You just don't want it to die. If you let it sit for too long, um, the algae will start to die. Shaking it does help. So there's that. That'll be set up in a few. And then, uh, Reef Guy, you were talking about these Lego looking frag plugs. They actually are ceramic and they're shaped that way so when you glue stuff on it really just holds it plus they grow nice. So these are awesome, really great frag plugs. Um, probably the best I've ever used and I only like using the black plugs anymore because the black plugs don't grow algae. They stay nicer, longer than the white plugs and a lot of those white plugs have so much um, grit on them that it just makes it so easy for the algae to attach the spores to sit on top of those plugs and then just um, grow from there. So the smoother the plug, actually, um, the longer it'll stay algae free. So I'm gonna test that out, that theory later. I have a 3D printed plug, that's pretty cool. It's only designed for holding the corals until you get it to your tank, and then you can either shove it in a rock, or you can break it off. So that's something that will be up to the customer. So check out these corals. Man, I love Euphelias. These things are just popping. Crazy mushrooms. All kinds of goodies. I should have put the filter on so you guys can really appreciate it, but these uh, pallies, that Monty is crazy. This one right here, it's like plating already. So somebody must have cut that off a well-established colony when they fragged it. So it looks awesome. Depending on what uh, part of the coral you get and what time it's been grown, I mean, even the Duncans, the Elegances, the Hammers, you can get a little baby head or you can get a, a four inch around head. I mean, I've seen some hammers that come, branching hammers that are just ginormous. You wouldn't believe it, but they've been in the ocean for so long, they just have grown. Um, so anyway, so there's that. I'm gonna set these lights up. I can't wait to see what they look like. Um, and let's see, flow. I keep testing things out. I drilled some holes in here for the anemones. Water blows over, hits here, reflects, goes around, creates nice, nice turbulence. You can even see that bucket spinning. Um, the anemones, I, I keep them for sale, but the problem is they will run away on you. You have to have a basket and a tank inside. They'll jump in your propellers just because it's a closed system. And there is holes drilled through here. I had an extra large anemone fit through that itty bitty little hole. I don't even know if you guys can see it, but there's a hole in there. So, you have to be careful. Um, let's go upstairs. I want to show you guys a few other things. Um, real quick. So like I said, looking forward to the extra color. And that blinking <laughs> radion, hopefully I can take that down and send it back to get fixed. So I'm gonna have to send it into the actual manufacturers. So and I need to clean my glass. This is pretty embarrassing, but look at my tanks. Alright, here's just a, a theory, but people put fish in their tank too early. A lot of people say, hey I can't keep coralline algae, it won't grow, this and that, but look at these lips all over this tank, okay, and you see all these tanks, if you don't have your coralline algae established before you add fish, these guys are probably picking it off all the time before it even has a chance to grow, and that's probably why the tank without the fish have just massive coralline everywhere because no one's picking at it, and it can just grow on its own without being disturbed, so, and also, it, coralline algae doesn't like the high light. You give it too much light and that stuff stops growing. They actually like the blue light and the lower, the lower um, strength, the lower intensity. So, cool. Alright guys, I'm going to run upstairs. I want to show you a few other things that I just got. And, and it's Valentine's Day. Uh, my wife got me a massage this morning. So I had a late kind of start and then I went and worked out and ran a couple errands. So, it's uh, February 14th. I hope somebody has, or everyone has someone to share a day with. So you guys have a good time, and I'll be right back. Alright, there's a couple things I just wanted to show you guys real quick. 
Everyone should have one of these things. I just picked this up at uh, Wegmans the other day. It was in their like a little um, cheapy electronic section. You know, you get like car chargers and all that good stuff. But this thing is absolutely crazy. You just clip your phone on it, and you clip the other end on a table, and it kind of feels like just a copper wire inside. Maybe some like, I don't know, some 12 gauge uh, copper wire that you can just use as flexible. So that holds your phone. Really cool tool to have. Um, just went to Best Buy and got some Google Home Minis. I got basically buy one, get one free. That was nice. And I got this ring floodlight camera for the dogs. It's got a two-way uh, microphone and it's a pretty cool speaker. So you can actually um, see people, which is pretty cool. And it's hardwired in so the battery doesn't die. My other cameras, I'm always replacing the batteries and it's driving me crazy. So I have to replace that light bulb. It is communicating to me. Um, letting me know it's time. Uh, but you guys, I just wanted to show you some things here. Great deal on flowers. I'm giving them to my daughters, my mother-in-law, my wife, and my mom. I will do that. And then these cool little bottles that we drank. Patron. So we'll cut them off and make little uh, vases for them. Of course, the wife gets the big one and uh, the children get the small one. But, <laughs> but there you go, guys. I just wanted to show you. Um, also, I'm a huge fan of Neil deGrasse, so Michu Kaku, another big fan, um, and I like to go through these books, read them, and I get a chance. And because of Will Smith, I now highlight everything I read, which is awesome, because I used to go back and forth, and now I'm just like, it's my book, I paid for it, I'm going to write in it, I'm going to rip it pages out if I have to, who cares? You just want to um, get that knowledge in your brain the best way you can. Don't be afraid to absorb something new. Uh, and this is really cool too, the Gorilla Pod. Um, I've been having trouble trying to get some good camera shots. So this thing should help. It just hooks on to anything. So there's that. All right, guys. Thanks again for watching. As always, happy reefing. Oh, also sweet 3D camera. Haha. <laughs> this thing is unbelievable. If I can get it out of here. This is my new gear 3D camera. So anything I videotape now, I can actually put on a 3D headset and look around as if I'm reliving the experience. So when we're jumping horses in the ring, I'll put this camera up in the middle, and then I can actually watch everyone riding at different times, so you don't miss one event. Like, it's crazy. Everyone's like yelling and then turning around. So like, what I miss? What I miss? It's like, oh, well, it's 360. You didn't miss nothing. We can rewind it and you can watch the back of your head. So, so there's that. All right, guys. All right, I'm crazy talking too much, but um, I think I'm just going to go... Uh, Get something to eat. Is that too much? Yeah. That may be too much. All right, Chris. <laughs> you want me to make something here? I can't leave you to. If I go get some food, you just got me mad. Since I'm in a very talkative mood today, um, I am going to show you guys, these are the deep blue tanks that I'm building the stands for right now. And I can't wait to get these up. It's going to look really good. Fill this thing up with anemones, mushrooms. It's just going to be a great grow out system where I don't have to worry about the corals killing each other. Hey, what are you doing, Griffin? Sit. Stop doing tricks before I even tell you to do them. He knows I got cookies in my pocket. That's why he's acting crazy. Ready, Griffin? <laughs> bang, bang. You both there. Down. You're not getting a treat. You're dead. Dead dogs don't need treats. Stay. Bailey. All right, here you go. You ready? Catching your mouth. Ah, you stole it. Who got the treat? Bailey, you're up. You ready? One, two, three, catch. Good catch, Bailey.